Okay, Scholar, so now we're going to be working on our winter scapes. Now we're going to start this the same way we did our last one, where we're going to draw a hill down here at the bottom, or a little line down here at the bottom, and I'm going to make a house and a tree down here. Now, again, we want this house to be three-dimensional. Now, I don't care if it's real, real big or real, real small. Just remember, if your house is too small, then your house that's back here is going to have to be even smaller than that. So plan accordingly. That's why I always think that this house here in the front should always be fairly big-sized. Even if it's gigantic, I don't even care if it goes off the page. See that? I'll make it so big, it's just going to run right off. And that's fine. That's not a problem. Then after that, I can start putting some of my details, like my door. Maybe I'll put a window over here. Uh, maybe I'll put some more details up here on the roof. And that's fairly good. Then over here, my tree. This tree can be the same thing. I don't really care if the tree goes off the paper. That's perfectly okay with me. As long as you make sure you got a tree somewhere here. Now, one of the things I'd like to see that I didn't mention in my last video was start putting some other details in here. It doesn't have to be just a house and a tree. You can do things like a fence. You can do things like a snowman. You can do things like kids. You can do things like a post, uh, a little post off, a post box. I mean, any of those things are perfectly okay. You can even put a little trail or a little uh, road coming off here. And that's fine. And then after you finish all your details on this one, on the foreground, then here in the background, you're going to have another little line. Now that little line can go above this or it can go through it, whichever one you want. There you go. I'm just going to let it go right through here. And then you're going to have your other house and your other tree back here somewhere. And so you're going to see that works pretty easily. If you have a really hard time fitting these things, if you're like, oh my gosh, I just don't have enough room, try this. Go this way. If you go this way, you have a lot more room in between your houses and your trees. And that way, they won't run into each other as much, or you'll have a lot more room in between these things. See that? And now you can see one is definitely near, and one is definitely far. So this is a little bit easier than this. Okay. Now, once you've got yours finished and you're ready, then we're going to start putting in some color. So this one, I've already got all my details, colored in my houses, colored in my trees, colored everything in except the snow and the sky. And to do that... We're going to use your friend and mine, Mr. Watercolors. Now, good good thing is, you don't actually need a whole lot of watercolor. You're going to only need a little bit. And I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can add just here in a second. Let me get my area nice and red. Okay, so now I've got my area set up for my watercolors. I've got my watercolors here, my water, my brushes. Now, I'm going to start with the sky. And I like to paint the sky just because we want everything to look kind of dreamy and pretty and calm. And so watercolors are just a very nice way to be able to paint these things. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of purple here, and I'm going to start painting the sky. And here we go. And I'm just going to paint this as neatly as I can. Grab some purple and just keep on going. Now I'm making my sky a little dark here. Yours does not have to be dark. In fact, I'm going to use this bigger brush because I think I'm a little slow now. Here we go. And so now I'm getting this purple all over the place. And I want you to notice that this paint is not really getting into the uh, crayon. I can still see that crayon pretty well, okay? Now, you've already colored in the houses, so you really don't need to paint them, but you can. Uh, the thing about crayon is crayon paints pretty well, but it doesn't fill things in. You're gonna notice little white specks in between everything that you just finished coloring in. Believe it or not, watercolor can go inside those little cracks and clean them up a little bit. So you can see there is a difference between using just crayons and using paint. Now, do you have to use paint on these things? No, it's not necessary, but you know, for some of these things, it might actually help. I mean, if you like the way this looks with paint on top of your crayons, then that's a fairly good way to go. You're certainly not hurting anything if you do that. And then the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to outline your snow. Now, remember how I told you that blue is a good color for snow because it tends to make it look colder? I'm gonna do the same thing with this blue, but I don't want a lot. I want a very light blue because I want it to look like a shadow. So I'm going to take this blue, dip it in my water so I lose a lot of it. I really don't want that much paint on my brush. And now I'm just going to paint a very light blue line on the edge of all my snow. Right here. On the edge of everything that's snowy, I'm just going to put a nice little blue shadow. And you're going to see that that actually does tend to make it look a little colder and it tends to make it look like this thing is actually in front of and behind other pieces. It helps all the grounds to look a little more separate from each other. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to paint everything in blue, 
Uh, this just means I'm going to put like a little shadow on the very edge of all this stuff. And there, that's good enough. Now, if you want to be extra super fancy schmancy, you can even try to make a little shadow from these objects. Now, I would not recommend you do this unless you're in fourth or fifth grade, because fourth or fifth grade did do a project just like this. I'm going to get a little bit of water. I'm going to get a little bit of black and blue. I'm going to dip it in here. So very little paint. And see that snowman? I'm going to pretend that there's a shadow. And to make the shadow, I'm just going to paint a little snowman right there, like him reflecting off this way. There's my little snowman right there. And it looks like there's a little shadow there. My little boy, same thing. I'll just make a little shadow there, like he's standing there. And I can do that for just about anything I want to. Now, if you do it in any place, then you got to do it every place, because if you don't, it's going to look weird. So here's that tree. I'm going to draw that tree casting a shadow. I'm going to draw that house casting a little shadow over here. And it's going to be a big one, but yeah. There's my house casting a shadow out here. There we go. And I can even do that for these little things over here. Grab a little blue, grab a little black, and maybe make a little shadow right there where the house is making a little shadow, where this thing is making a little shadow, all these little trees. Okay, it's not necessary, but sometimes it helps. Okay, and so there you go. Now I've got my finished winterscape. Now again, second, third graders, I really wouldn't do, recommend doing these cast shadows. I think just a little blue on all your edges is fairly good. And that is it. And don't forget, I want to see lots of different details. I've seen little, I've seen kids do things like snowmen, kids, I've seen uh, Santa Claus flying around here. You can always do lights on your trees. You can do lights on your houses. You can add all kinds of stuff. So can't wait to see how these come out.